you discussed the uh, potential for bonds to correct. A huge influx of capital will be looking for a new home, and that won't just be in equities. The only place remaining that comes to mind is commodities, and particularly precious metals. Yes, correct. But I also have to say, the equity market worldwide is very large, and there are some equities that are not terribly expensive. I mean, I look at Asian equities, they had a very big move from the lows, a lot of equities, for instance, here in Thailand, I find stocks that still have a dividend yield of around 6-7% and will give you some protection against inflation in future and against price increases and so forth. So I'm not overly bearish about stocks given the lack of alternative investments. Because for a lot of individuals, it's just difficult to buy commodities. It's easy for them to buy gold and silver. But it's difficult for them to buy, say, commodities that have significant contangos, in other words, forward premiums, because they can buy a commodities ETF. But unless the commodity goes up very substantially, they lose money. Say the natural gas, 12 months out contract, sells at 100% premium. So the natural gas would have to kind of double from here over the next 12 months before you would make money in a natural gas ETF. You know, gold has meandered for almost two years in a very broad trading range. It appears to be winding up for a considerable move, and it's one of the few markets that has maintained a long-term uptrend. I own gold, and this is my largest single position in my portfolio, and I own it in physical form, in a safe deposit box, but I'm not convinced that this move above a thousand today is gonna last. And uh, for my taste, there's a, big too, uh, a little bit too much enthusiasm about gold right now. So I think we may correct. We have an unusual situation in investment markets, which I would like to summarize as follows. Since March, the equity markets have rallied, but the dollar has been weak. In 2008, the equities markets were weak, but the dollar rallied. The dollar rallies when liquidity tightens, and the dollar weakens when liquidity expands in the world. So now we have a situation where equities have been strong since March, commodities have been very strong, gold less so than other commodities because gold never went down last year the way other commodities collapsed, like oil from $147 down to 32 at the end of 2008. So gold has been relatively stable. Now, will gold just soar from here? I'm not sure. But I repeat what I said in the past. Since no decent citizen should trust the Federal Reserve, for one second, he must own his own gold reserve in order to protect the value of his purchasing power. And uh, it's very important that every citizen owns some gold because the government will make sure that money will become worthless. I just looked the other day at the military expenditures and at the engagement of the U.S. now and increased engagement in Afghanistan and also at the increased usage of so-called contractors, mercenaries. It's a very dangerous trend. And uh, I understand that Americans insist on their constitutional right to own guns because these mercenaries could turn one day against U.S. citizens. Can we reestablish ourselves as the global economic superpower? Well, I would say that the economic development of the United States after 1800 up to the 1950s was essentially an economic miracle in the world in the sense that the U.S became the most powerful economy, highly respected, the world's leading innovator, and also most powerful nation in terms of its military capability relative to the rest of the world. Uh, since the 50s, we had the first uh, symptoms of some 
uh, unease in the late 60s when the dollar began to wobble and when we had increasing fiscal deficits and also uh, trade and current account deficits and then in the 70s the Japanese, Taiwanese and Korean com uh, competition came in and the manufacturing sector in the U.S. began to suffer. But especially after the opening of China and the whole process of outsourcing to India and China, you can essentially forget about manufacturing in the U.S. for a while. Unless, say, the dollar collapsed by 50% in value against the euro and against other Asian currencies, the manufacturing just isn't going to come back to the United States. And so I feel that relative to the rest of the world, the U.S. is losing out. It doesn't mean that the U.S. will fall to the bottom of the ocean, but uh, the standards of living, in my opinion, haven't increased for the average family in the last 20, 25 years, and in my opinion, will continue to deteriorate. In Asia, we have nations like China and India, that will become larger and more significant and emerging market complex. In other words, also Brazil and Central Asia, the Middle East, Russia and so forth, will become economically more important in the world. doesn't mean that Western Europe and the U.S. goes to zero, but it means that the Asian economies and emerging economies will grow at a faster pace and when these changes, these global changes occur, in other words, you have a superpower, then other powers come up. The problem is that the superpower wants to contain the rise of the emerging powers, and the emerging powers want to have more say, and then it comes to tensions in the world and eventually to war. Would you agree for the United States to remain competitive, our wages would most certainly have to also become more competitive and we most certainly would have to return to a manufacturing base? The emphasis in the U.S. should be on savings and capital formation. In other words, uh, capital investments. Capital investments can be in education and R&D. It doesn't necessarily have to be in the construction of a new manufacturing plant. But I think it would be important to boost education in the United States. I mean, the education level in the U.S. of the average person is relatively low in comparison to other advanced economies. So that's what I think should be done. Please help folks navigate their Internet browsers to your website to find out more about your work. The website is called Gloom, Boom, Doom. Dot com and it's all in one word www.gloomboomdoom.com thank you bye bye